example how to use the grid view data keys option within ASP.NET using C Sharp as a language. What basically data keys allow you to do is they allow you to keep track of stuff that actually occurs within the grid view like the columns such as staff name in my example I have like staff number, name, education, experience and so on and what it will do is it will keep track of these little individual the data in these columns that you can use to output to fields or do whatever you want like down here I actually stuck them into messages and stuff like that. It's actually pretty handy for people who need to capture information directly from the fields and want to search a data, basically search through a table or the grid view. So let's get started on that. Um, to kind of show you how my example works here basically, um, I have set up a list of names here, just some random names that I came up with, actors and just different names individually. And these names themselves are going to be used to display to the screen as you can see down here. So right here I just use an actor's name and if I change this to something else, like a leader's name or something like that, you'll see this information change at the bottom and also changes down here too for the new message. So basically it works and keeps track of whatever name you're putting into the text box and outputs it to the screen thanks to the data keys. Now the other thing this program does, I'll raise this text box here to show you, it basically also, and this is not used by data keys, this is just another example for people who want to learn. It actually will show you when you click on these check boxes here what you've uh, selected down here in the grid view below. So basically it will change based on whatever options you're clicking on. Watch, I'll show you again. See how it's changing? It's keeping track of individually whatever you had clicked on and narrowing it down to those choices alone. Okay, so that's the outside of everything and also displays this little value at the window. This isn't necessary, but this is just keeping track of a column individually from the data set somewhere. I think it might be this one actually. I think I think it's the last row. Let me just clarify that here. Yeah, it's actually the last row. No, it's the last row. It's actually keeping track of individual stuff. Anyways, this I'll show you how this works directly behind the code behind and stuff like that. So let me get this canceled here for a minute and open this back up. Okay, so now we're looking directly at the code behind and what mine actually does here. Let me actually start from here. I think it'd probably be better to start from the design perspective for people who want to know that. This is how you set up the design part basically. Check boxes, text boxes, and then here's the grid view. Normally people would go in here and like configure the grid view and stuff like that by changing this, but I have mine set up directly in code behind. It's a little bit faster and it works pretty well with the data keys. So what you're looking at here, first of all, is I use a set of arrays to keep track of the data that's being found in the staff number the name, education, all the way up to availability. These are actually my, my search options. I'll show you these below, but this is just initialization set up here. And this section right here is an array where I store all the names that I'm clicking on basically from the fields, and I'll show you that in a minute. And these are just my um, data keys initialized in my query variable. Now earlier when you saw me clicking on the checkboxes, these are the checkboxes going from 1 to 13 and it displays the output name into that array, each individual array that I had set up, which actually works directly with some SQL code below. And I'll show you that. So going down here, the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be checking these arrays to see if there's anything in them. So in other words, did you click on a checkbox? Which checkbox did you click on? So that's what these, this is doing. It's saying if the string is not null or empty, you notice know, the sign means not, then that means there is something found in name 1 or name 2 all the way up to name 13. And if something is found, we're going to run the first query. And I just set that into a method down here for the query. Basic initialization it starts to set it up with this is the um, use an access. That's why I called it string access connector or con and it keeps track of what's in the database here and let me pull that up here I forgot to actually set that up on a computer here so let me give me a minute to research that here it's right here
here. Take a second here. So it's under the staff table. And you remember the data you saw earlier on the screen, hence back here, is the same that you're seeing over here. So it's basically just pulling the fields from this access database from the table called staff and deciding which row you're clicking on. And that's what these are basically doing here. It's a select statement. If anybody's familiar with SQL, it's pulling all the rows here from staff name, excuse me, staff number, name, education, experience, hourly rate. It's pulling all the rows from the table called staff, obviously right here. And then once it's pulled the data, based on whatever you put into those check fields, it's then just going to order it. And this is something called sorting, so it puts it in order by the name. So it puts it in alphabetic order by name. And these are just the connection strings I set up for access, the DB connections and stuff like that. <coughs> okay, so earlier when you saw that value at the bottom of the screen I was showing you, it wasn't really a necessity, but since I left it in this program for people who might want to learn, what it's basically doing is going here into the data set, the data set um, object I set up here, and it's pulling the table based on the row and the column, so zero row, two column. You can use that too as another shortcut. And then this is just binding the data. Anytime you want to see the data, you must bind it. So that's how it displays. Okay. And let's see if I need to go in to the next section here. I wanted to see something here a minute. Yeah, this is uh, the example I showed you earlier when I ran it. And let me run it to show you live what this next section is doing. These are the data keys that the whole purpose of this video is telling you about. This is how you set up a data key. You just set up a variable name, which I initialized earlier in the class setup. And then you just call it from grid view, data keys. You could, this uh, GBR can be anything you want. This is just stands for grid view row, I believe. And then these are the values. Notice it says zero all the way up to six. So basically, going back to my data set here, there's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is basically picking up those six rows based on the grid view, based on whatever we stuck in the, this area right here. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's how that works. It's basically just pulling those rows. And once it's pulled those rows, what it does is it use I use an array here from the array list to go ahead and capture the data from each of those rows, from staff number, name, obviously all the way up to availability. And you'll see the importance of this in a minute. I wanted to I'll run this in just a second, but I wanted to explain the next step so I can show you exactly what's going on here in the process. So the next thing I'm doing here, after I've established my grid views and I've saved them in the arrays, I'm setting up a for loop, which basically cycles through a set, an iteration set of numbers from zero, and I set it up to the fine length count. So it's basically taking the length of the count name, the name being this, whatever, how many names we have in there. And that's based on also how many names were saved in here. So it's always going to be 13, I believe it's 13 or 12 or whatever. And then what it does is once it's finding that name, it's searching to see this area right here is called TXT search name, which is exactly what this text box is. If you go back here, I don't know if this will show in this um, video, but some things don't pick up in uh, the Camtasia studio here, but let me see if it actually picks up. I'll probably have to stop this to see it, the properties. Okay, so they're down here. I got a little slow here, aren't we? Okay, so I don't know if you can see this, but it's showing the property name TXT search name. And if you go back here, that's exactly what this is doing here. So let me run this again. And that's just the name of that text box. So whatever you type in this text box, earlier you saw me type in different names in the text box, it's going to take those values that it's found based on the search 
that it found at this location. So it's saying as soon as you're going through the iteration and you've typed in John Ritter or whatever, this will suddenly equal John Ritter. This will be the first name. I'll put John Ritter down here in the person name. And then at that point, it's still looking exactly at that grid view row. So it's picking up whatever's in the John Ritter row. So it'll be picking up all the column names, which I just named accordingly from education, experience, hourly location, and availability. And it outputs them to the appropriate rows down here. So that's how you capture the information. But remember, you first, to be able to see that data, you want to make sure you save it in a data key. I use it to save in an array so it can search and find the right name to appropriate to the text boxes. You don't have to do that. You want to, you can just set it directly and it'll read the first row, but then you won't be able to find a search. So you have to set up a search to find out which row you've come across. And once you get that, you could change this to anything, for example. This doesn't have to just be named. If you wanted to search, let's say you wanted to search education, you just change this to like education. And then this would be. I know it's not an appropriate name, but let's just say this was TXT Search Education, which would still be whatever you type in here. And I could even show you, I'm not going to rename all this, but I could show you right now. Actually, no, I have to stop this to show you this again. Actually, you know, I don't even know the name of the education. Let me go back here again and see what's in there. So we have uh, like BSCIS. So let's. Um, BSCIS. Hopefully this will work. Probably some other things I need to do with it. But, oh, right here. I need to change this to education. So you have to change both of them because this is searching the range of education. Let's try it again. Well, whatever. I'd probably have to work on that. But anyways, um, that's how you change the values based on whatever you're searching for. I just have to set up for name. It's something I probably have to debug later. See what I'm missing there. But you can search the names that way anyway and find them in the database. That's going to bug me. I'm going to figure out later why that didn't work. But it's probably something else that I've missed in the fields here or something. But anyways, um, that's how that part works. And the next section here is where you saw, let me run this again. Based on the name you typed in, you saw at the bottom here that it displayed a message down here at the bottom. So down here, we're saying, my name is Arnold Schwarzenegger, my staff number is da 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 da. That's what this is doing right here. It's just outputting whatever you found in these fields to their appropriate text boxes. I mean, through the label. It's concatenating everything together and just putting a little message. I just did that just for test purposes. Oh, uh, and you know, I skipped this section here. I know I went straight into this, but this is a, uh, what this is basically saying is, did you type something into the text box that works kind of similar to this one? If you type something in there, just do the query too. And this is how it displays the, everything from whatever you type in this text box. It just searches it by the, the text box name. And I could just do this without this, but this just wouldn't show you how to output to the fields because you have to search through this um, area here for the data keys. But you can still make it do a simple query search based on whatever name you type in here, and it'll always show this grid view down here. That's what this corresponds to, is the second grid view. And I think that's pretty much all. Oh, and then the other, uh, only other thing was I didn't show you this, but if I'm running this and I type something in, like if I click on these checkboxes, I can clear them just by clicking that, and that's what this does down here. It clears all the checkboxes fields. Other than that, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments below. I'll be happy to respond back. I don't get too many ASP videos out there too often. I get pretty busy in my work as a programmer, so sometimes I don't have time to even, you know, enjoy myself and try to explain 
and share some of the information I am learning. But I am learning a lot of stuff there. Even stuff like SQL Server, I wish I could, if I had a connectivity here, I could even show you how stuff like that works and database concepts and many different things that you learn on the job, basically. So, anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching. And if you're interested, also go ahead and subscribe. Have a great day.